Good evening everyone, System Chalk here with the seventh episode of the Dancer DLC for Cult of Simulator. This is actually one of the first times, if I recall correctly, I can't remember if this was the first time that I got to stream for uh, Weather Factory on their Steam page or if I did the base game originally, but I actually don't think I have done a Dancer run uh, since then, so this has been kind of a fun um, a fun little trip. Although, I will confess, I'm... Uh, <clears throat> I've, I didn't realize how much of this legacy I'd forgotten. So uh, we've already got our first step of the change. We've gotten Leaf. Uh, we're currently performing at the Gaiety Theater. We're going for fresh air and exercise. Now this is a little bit of a trap, and this is a trap that I tend to get caught in uh, over multiple playthroughs. Those of you who've been watching the previous runs may notice this, where once I have a couple of lessons learned, I wind up on this treadmill of, of trying to sort of um, get that last lesson learned. Uh, but of course, un unless I can really sort of knock them all out at the same time, uh, they decay back down to their sort of source material and I, I wind up spending more time on it than I necessarily want to. Now the fact of the matter is, is that health is very important for the dancer. <clears throat> and it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in a better, even if the lessons learnt were to decay down to regular vitality, I'm in a better position now than I am really at any other time in the game to be able to take advantage of it. And more importantly, unlike reason and uh, passion, which have uh, material that you can get a, you know, a lesson learned from. So the collection of essays and the collection of poetry will give you either an, an erudition or a glimmering lesson learned with which you can sort of open those and, and more or less assure that you're going to move the level up. Um, you know, your physical form requires, you know, you, you have to do the exercise. You need the venta. Well, sorry, that's not entirely true. Supernatural means can also help you, but much like uh, real exercise, if you just simply wait for uh, supernatural means, I suppose actually much like writing too, if you just wait for inspiration, uh, you will probably not, um, you'll probably not realize the uh, peak of your, your talents. <clears throat> so, uh, season of uh, sorry, season of ambitions coming up. I think we already covered this in the previous episode, so uh, this will generate a restlessness which I may not be able to work with because we will be uh, dealing with Lord Timothy Monday before too long. I'm recovering from fatigue. That's just the usual routine that I'll do <clears throat> to try and keep my health uh, ready to go. It is a little bit of a drawback because it is uh, preventing me from going to the wood, but I do like uh, being able to just trigger more hard events. And then finally, we're adding to our library. One of the reasons I'm doing this is I think the expeditions, excuse me, with health were taking up too much, uh, taking up a health card for too long. So I decided against, against that. We'll see whether or not that turned out to be a good idea, though. <clears throat> excuse me. All right. The humors of a gentleman. I like this one. I don't know why. Like, there's some... So there's some texts where I just really like the writing for them. Uh, there are other texts where it's just the idea of them. And uh, The Humans of a Gentleman is, is one which I, I... I don't know, I just generally think fondly of. It takes time to sort the gold from the dross, the wheat from the chaff, the blood from the water. If I buy enough books, I will find something interesting. <clears throat> uh, right, that's all good. So I want to be careful about the magnets, just because they, uh, if they come up in inconvenient times, it's, it's a problem. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there's any value in trying to preserve... No, in this case, uh, studying with health still makes the most sense. Long walks kill cobwebs. Again, there's the possibility of doing uh, something like Apollo and Marsyas, but in this case, I just want to go for the vitality <clears throat> as, as it is. And actually thinking of it, so we've got um, one lesson learned, two lessons learned. Yeah, so we're still going to be... We're still going to be on the treadmill. Time the sundial's shadow passes. I must have funds to live or I will become ill. Another copy of the... Well, not a, another volume of the Locksmith stream. And once again, we'll go to Moreland's just because we have a lot of money... And again, the dream slot I'll keep open because we'll be finishing at the Gaiety before too long. Okay, so we've got the opportunity. Tonight I sense an opportunity. To, uh, tonight I could attract attention if I cease to hold back, if I commit myself more fully. Now in this particular case, <clears throat> I think I'm going to use the health 
It's not even necessarily about trying to provoke a course of the heart, but it's just that I have more health available to me right now, and passion is something that I may need for Lord Timothy Monday. So, in this case, I am indeed a listen package of flesh and blood. <clears throat> and here we go. Okay, so uh, definitely a double-edged sword here, because the restlessness is going to be a big problem, and we'll have double restlessness. So tonight, they'll notice that. So, extra funds. <clears throat> I felt their eyes upon me. Afterwards, I received a gift from an admirer. Too gaudy for my tastes, but I can sell it on the second-hand market. So we'll take a second here, recover what we can from the fatigue. Now, <clears throat> because it's 30 seconds here, it just makes as much sense for this one to uh, be restored on its own. But again, we just need... Essentially, we need sort of one of each available to make sure that we meet uh, Lord Timothy Monday's tastes. So my benefactor would be delighted if I'd offer a private performance for a small and refined audience. They'll invite me to dinner afterwards and, of course, offer suitable gifts in return for my time. Now, <clears throat> I'm a little bit lucky in the sense that I've got the Season of Ardors coming up. That is going to use up the Dream Slot, which I do need <clears throat> to be able to restore certain, certain traits. Um, but uh, in this case here, I need to prepare for the uh, the dread that will come from uh, the restlessness. So I found something noteworthy, traveling at night. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Now one of the things that, again, if you think of what's interesting with the dancer, it's... Um, <clears throat> Another thing that I like about the way... We've talked... Obviously, I spent quite a bit of time in the previous episode talking about trying to manage the time among your different admirers. Come with me. Ah, Rhaenyra. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rhaenyra has been found not guilty three times in three separate jurisdictions. She will likely never be found guilty of anything. <clears throat> oh, okay. We get the passion back. Cool. I wasn't sure if that... Uh, exhausted it or not. It's tempting to bring Rhaenyra in uh, to the cult, but we don't actually have any grail uh, any grail jobs we need done right now, so it makes as much sense to just talk about esoteric matters. <clears throat> um, but yeah, one of the other things that I actually kind of like about the way uh, the dancer works and this um, trouble in terms of just managing your, your different obligations is if you think about uh, happiness or contentment, rather, in relation to dealing with dread. So when you, um, you know, when you work at Glover and Glover, you have a boss that's sort of forcing you to do, to do things on his timeline. And there can be ways where you, I mean, sometimes you can get lucky. You have certain ways of dealing with that boss. But essentially what you have in this case is an external force that is keeping you from doing certain things that will improve your contentment or to generate contentment. Um, you can generate contentment through other means uh, much the same way. And again, like you could sort of think if this were to be told in a cyberpunk setting, you could imagine, you know, Glover and Glover being the corporate wage slave uh, and the only way that they can generate contentment would be through the purchase of the products. And obviously Glover and Glover does not secretly own the Ignisus Club, although that would be a fascinating, I'm, I'm sure... Uh, some of the creative modders in here might say, actually, that sounds like a great idea, and we'll wind up with a, <clears throat> a fun idea out of that. But in this case here, the way that you will generate contentment will be through uh, sort of, I guess, the, re the sorts of things that you and I would, uh, where we would get our contentment, the sort of reason why we go to a job, right? So first of all, we want to maintain our health. We want to have a certain amount of nutrition and shelter. Um, and so, you know, we cover those basics. And then some of our contentment is generated through, you know, getting certain goods and services. So we will visit the Ecdysis Club. Some of us might, you know, put a little money into the dream slot uh, and you know, without trying to put too much of a ranking in terms of the various uh, activities, um, there are going to be different side effects for each of these, um, you know, each of these options, and they will have sort of longer term consequences, potentially. <laughs> and of course, in the case of the aspirant or anybody who sort of works at Glover and Glover, reaching a certain level in your career actually gives you the leisure with which you can pursue either your occult studies or uh, to do things like painting. 
Uh, and then, of course, in the case of painting, there are those situations where, in fact, you can get con uh, contentment from the work itself. What I find so interesting about the dancer, uh, and again, this sort of speaks to these kinds of professions, which is that there isn't necessarily an external force that's forcing you to uh, avoid activities that generate contentment. So, uh, again, everybody has the option. Again, much like we do, you know, today. As long as you have a certain a certain income, uh, you can buy a video game, you can buy a book, you can, you know, go to a park. I mean, parks are at least where I am, three. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, something like an aquarium or that. Um, <clears throat> Basically, you when when you're at a certain income level, uh, and these are the you know, people I'm talking about in terms of Cult of Simulator, uh, you you know these are the options that are kind of available to everyone. But uh, obviously, you you're not going to get very far in the game, and I'm assuming also in life you're maybe not necessarily going to be all that satisfied if your existence sort of is just covering what you need to be able to go and buy the next product. Um, you know, you just kind of keep flipping through the channels until you hit retirement and then maybe you finally do all those things that you wanted to do. <clears throat> that is incidentally one thing that doesn't seem to be present in Cultus Simulator until you go into the exile. The exile has a force that is chasing you and so as a consequence the passage of time really does um, really does sort of force you to um, to keep going on the move and keep making progress. Whereas in the case of the base game, there isn't, like, the game doesn't age you. And so, you know, you don't have some sort of a timer to sort of, you know, you start generating decrepitude after a certain period of time as you, you get older. Uh, and so as a result, you know, you can build up a lot of, a lot of wealth. <clears throat> and essentially you can just get on to, like, so, you know... Uh, you and I have to deal with the fact that we're mortal and that uh, if, again, you kind of read the game the way that I do, which is in the end, the, the rituals, the ambition is sort of that, that thing that really speaks to you, that thing that you kind of consider very core to your person. Uh, and again, if you want to kind of get platonic about it, you know, it's that, that brilliant idea that you will make manifest into the world or, you know, whatever, whatever you want to read it as. Um, there is a, only a certain period of time in which we're going to be able to do that. And of course, there's also going to be a certain period of time where you do actually want to gain the abilities to put you in a position to be able to realize it. Um, and again, the outside world is quite hostile to realizing these things. Um, there's certainly going to be a lot of forces that will discourage or uh, get in the way. Essentially, there will be th other things that keep you from spending time on it may be a way that you would want to. It's actually why I think this game is quite analogous to The Sims, because The Sims is very much about managing your time in a way that allows you to flourish. Although, again, it's kind of hard to say to someone, you know, if you like The Sims, you should play Cultus Simulator. <clears throat> but the, the thing that I find so interesting, I'm sorry to kind of go through a few winding paths to get to this point, but the distinction between something like the Aspirant, who might be working at Glover & Glover, and the dancer is that the gaiety theater you can pretty reliably get two funds for less than a minute of work so that that's actually better than what you'll normally get from glover and glover uh, and it's not the timer on glover and glover or on um, the contract of the gaiety right the gaiety will allow you two minutes and if you want you can go paint you know you can you can really do whatever you want with that work slot to generate your contentment uh, and again, generate contentment in a way that doesn't have negative side effects. So if you go to the Ecdysis Club, you potentially get notoriety. Um, and, you know, again, the idea here when I was talking about Glover and Glover before is that you need to reach a certain station in your job before you can sort of afford to slack off and take up painting. You know, sort of the same way that it's actually really hard to work. I, I've, I've had a point where I've worked essentially three minimum wage jobs and you don't do your, your best work when you're, you're doing that. Um, at least I don't. Um, it is certainly not to suggest that good work can't come out of financial hardship, but certainly it is, you know, having the time to to work on, on this stuff is beneficial. Uh, yes, I know I'm dropping truth bombs here. <clears throat> 
But with that in mind, you still feel very pressed for time as the dancer. And it's entirely through your individual choice. You know, how much do you want that extra money from uh, the benefactors? And of course, the benefactors are a temporary state of affairs. They are going to want more of you and maybe more than you're willing to give up. And so if you let the contract at the gaiety go away, you can actually wind up in a really uh, tough spot. And so there's lots of forces that will make you want to stay in the work slot. And um, I didn't want to spend a lot of time. I know I know the last couple of episodes I wanted to spend a lot of time talking about um, uh, talking about what's going on behind this. But there's actually um, there's a very specific thing that I think about when this comes up in this game. It's actually something I've felt since the first time that I played the dancer. And for a while, I worked in uh, the film industry. I worked in the camera department. And it's, even though it's a union job, it's one where you are responsible for finding your next job. And for a very long time, I, you know, I, I did well enough. Like I, you know, I was able to, to get the next job. So in, in this case, I was always sort of looking for what that next gig might be. Uh, generally, if you're on television, you make a little bit less money, but there's that stability of a longer period of time of production. And then, of course, if you're working uh, on features, then once the feature is done, you know, you're not going to be in the editing room. That's somebody else's uh, job, at least if you're in the camera department, obviously, if you're a lead uh, in certain certain positions, you're going to be sort of going through post-production as well. But for me, uh, sort of, I guess, for lack of better information like this is a foolish belief on my part but like i was always worried about you know if my name wasn't out there the opportunities would dry up and i would find myself in a position where i would want to work and couldn't and so i would always be looking for the next job and i was always able to find it and what this meant was that there were years that went by without ever taking a break uh, it essentially had to be a um it had to be a holiday, like that there was no production happening. Uh, and eventually there was a strike. And that, that was where I took my, my first break involuntarily. And what happened to me was I had found out that I sort of wrapped myself up so much in that job. Uh, it was nice to have some time off. And then I realized there wasn't really a whole lot there. Like, you know, if I had sort of defined myself through that job and the job sort of taken away, there's the quite like th there is a very reasonable question you ask. Well, well, is this it? Like, is this all all that that I am? So that did ultimately lead me. I did work a little bit after after that. It'd be nice if I could sort of give it as a nice tidy package of a story. But, um, you know, life is complicated, right? So you kind of dip your toe into one thing and then you move back and then but it was ultimately kind of the beginning of the end of my film career, and not because, you know, the work never came back. The work certainly did. Um, but it's actually something that when I play the dancer, that that's a time of my life I remember a lot. Um, and it's, again, specifically because um, there was nothing ever really telling me um, I had to keep working like that. Um, and yet I always sort of felt in the background that there was that, you know, I just needed to, to trip up that one time and, you know, the bottom would fall out and I'd, I'd essentially be facing unemployment. Uh, and so that's ultimately, and you can see it reflected in my gameplay, right? Um, in the end, I try to make the most of these professions. And as a result, um, the dancer ultimately does not spend the time on the things that will, that will make them a better person. Sorry if that's oversharing, but uh, I don't think I've ever actually mentioned that detail on the dancer before. All right. So uh, this lesson learned is going to decay no matter what. Uh, so let's grab the old, the two older vitalities. <clears throat> we'll turn that into a uh, into a lesson learned. Essentially, I only want to do this when uh, one of them is about to like be lost completely. And the same self, I am no further along my path of change. In the movements of the secret forms, I must find my lesson. I do rather wish they would put the change back where they found it. Okay, this one I might let uh, fall to 
uh, dread, but we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Ah, the light, the dark. All right. So it did say old and happy, far off things originally, but for whatever reason, this has turned into the light, the dark, and so as a result, I don't need to worry so much about the restlessness. So, what could I be? Uh, what could I be if I could be not this? So this would normally be an entryway to leveling up my passion, but clearly I want to work on my uh, my vital or my health first. So now I'm not going to bring this health into the dream slot. That doesn't make any sense. We'll just wait for the next the next case where I'm tired, and then we'll we'll move on. Again, I could try going to the Mansus, but that's not quite where I want to to go. And we have the Season of Sickness coming up, so I may need to sacrifice some of the vitality to cure, my, cure myself. But um, I may be in a position where I want to spend the funds. In that sense, I can see the funds as just being not exactly generating a vitality, but avoiding the loss of vitality. It'll depend on how far we are on, on this path, though. Alright, tonight my benefactor will prefer to see me in something new. I should buy something quickly. Okay. There it goes. And we have found the War of the Roads, 1450 to 1580 censored edition. I've never actually seen the collection of all the books from Moorlands in one stack. Normally I read them as I go. This is really interesting. For whatever reason, despite my best efforts, my benefactor does not seem interested in me tonight. They do make an effort to bid me a courteous goodbye, but their customary gift seems like an afterthought. I'm trying to remember if I've ever actually succeeded with the the new outfit. I feel like I have. It's hard to remember. Okay, so this is a possibility. I think it's 45 seconds, so the uh, restlessness will not be useful to me. But yeah, so we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to get rid of the dread with um, the contentment. And we're gonna need to be careful about the timings on these things. So I believe this vitality will expire soon. I need to be careful. I'm going to play around with the ordering here a little bit. All right, the victory of crowns. I think that's Arun? Yeah. <clears throat> Takes time to sort the gold from the dross, the wheat from the chaff, the blood from the water. If I buy enough books, I'll find something interesting. Oh, that's really interesting to see it move uh, between the two. All right, I am refreshed. Okay, so I got to think a little bit about how I'm using the dream slot. I think I need to kill the rest, uh, the dread right away. I remember I was different before. Oop. And I'm ready to grow stronger. Use this lesson learned with your strength skills. So... Again, with the strength skill, we only have the two lessons learnt now, and we've got one vitality expiring. So in this case, back on the treadmill, we'll combine these two. With luck, we'll get a, a course of the heart. <clears throat> but the purpose of the uh, the lessons learnt is basically just to try and preserve something. Uh, it's not um, it's not that I it's not that I want to do it. All right, tonight I sense opportunity. Tonight I could attract attention. If I cease to hold back, if I commit myself more fully. I'm a little, well, nope, uh, the reason got picked up. So in this case, we can't afford to put the passion in. I'm more than a listen package of flesh and blood. And again, the glimmering probably is gonna be lost. I just don't see, I just don't see how I can make this all work. Tonight they'll notice that. I felt their eyes upon me. Afterwards, I received a gift from an admirer. A little too personal for me to feel comfortable, but I can sell it in the second-hand market. Oop, nope, we're not going back to the gaiety. We need to go to a private engagement. 
My benefactor would be delighted if I'd offer a private performance for a small and refined audience. They'll invite me to dinner afterwards, and of course offer suitable gifts in return for my time. I'm moving on, Miss Moreland informs you. My stock is largely exhausted and the Suppression Bureau are taking an interest, so it's goodbye. This last book is nonsense, but I've tucked some interesting papers into the back as a thanks for your custom. So, conveniently, we've got a higher level moth. A wood whisperer. Lie awake and listen. The wind speaks in the branches. The house cries out in its sleep. These are the roads that chaos rides. Speak this over a corpse and a right with winter influence present, and the corpse will rise. Okay, I think I'm going to change, uh, change my lore a little bit. <clears throat> so not much I can do with the health right now. The dream slot's going to be occupied for a while. And in this case, this is a little bit of a risky call just because of how much health I'm going to need for other activities. But in this case, I will search the city by foot uh, just because we do need to find more locations. Okay, and as tempting as it is to use professional muscle to get rid of the weary detective. Oh, that's the uh, gap that I didn't identify. Um, we will uh, we'll resist the urge for now. Hunter has found notoriety. They will uh, try to use it to create or upgrade evidence. If they're meticulous, they'll always succeed. If they're erratic, they're more likely to fail, but they can occasionally create evidence without notoriety. And we have found Madame Bichet. We can learn from each other. Okay, so there's some mystique. <clears throat> we'll move the barber's warning over here. And Madame Bichet will join the audience. Okay, so I have a couple of options available to me. I think I'm still going to talk about lore. Now, there is a question as to whether or not I want to use the higher level or the lower level. I am a little worried about the risk of the restlessness, but given the fact that we did get a glimmering from the last uh, old and happy far off things, I think I'm going to try and test this and see what happens when I throw a little bit more moth in. It's also worth saying I might want to try another performance at the Ignisus Club now that we have a higher level, um, now that we have a higher level uh, moth. But I will, uh, I'll maybe save that for another another time. All right, the sun still moves, the wind still walks. My journals are the labyrinth glue. So I've got nine minutes, or sorry, nine seconds before the uh, affliction goes by. In this case, I am going to, uh, I think I'm going to wait. I'm going to use my vitality and I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to keep my vitality and I'm going to spend money. Uh, again, I'm just viewing that as a chance to generate um generate more vitality. Uh, we are at a point where we're potentially going to be losing one, so we will combine these two into a lesson learned. And we will hope for a course, uh, a course of the heart before too long. Tonight my benefactor will prefer to see me in something new. I should buy something quickly. So let's see whether or not the funds work. I have noticed when we double click the, uh, when we double click the funds, oop, Not sure if there's a better way of doing this, but. This illness has damaged my health. I will need to rest before I'm fully recovered. So, here we go. Medicine is dark and bitter as tar. It would be easy to suspect I'm being poisoned. So let's see whether or not the funds get accepted. Actually, here's an interesting... Okay, yes. So it does does register. My benefactor watches me fondly. I've chosen my attire well for the performance. My benefactor showers me with compliments and gifts. And more importantly, we've got a course of the heart. Although we seem to make a little less money this time. I wonder if that's a... Fun well, actually, that could just be because that funds was running around on its own. I'm safe for now. My adversary has not enough evidence to bring a case against me, and they found no new clues. Okay, uh, back to the gaiety before we uh, lose the job. We could probably visit uh, Lord Mundy, um, but again, the gaiety has a slightly, slightly shorter timer, and I'm trying trying something here where I sort of deal with the the most the kind of 
the ur most urgent fire. Um, the stage awaits hot and clean and bare and bright. If I move the moves and step the steps and do what is required, they'll pay me. Move this health up. Normally here, the health would be going into the dream slot, but we're already recovering a health uh, through money. And my original hope was to try and get another level of... Oop, better not. I must be careful of the company I keep. So my original hope was that we would be getting our next level of strength, but didn't quite turn out that way, so that will probably be our ambition for next time. Uh, the other thing that I want to try and do is find the auction house next. So the gaiety doesn't require... Uh, doesn't require my attention, so we will search the city again. And uh, yeah, I mean, if we generate, of course, the heart, so much the better. Um, I can obviously send out followers to look for locations, but in this case here, I want to be slamming uh, slamming the verbs with as many uh, as much heart aspect as I can. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope this wasn't. I know the side side discussions are usually you're. You've all been very kind about them, and uh, as always, I do appreciate uh, I do appreciate comments. But I wanted to uh, I should take a minute here and just uh, say you know I, f I know for some of you you don't necessarily care for the personal anecdotes, um, but I suppose the best I could say is feel free to share uh, your own kind of hooks or or connections that you make with the game, uh, if maybe you you see it in a different different light. Uh, as always, if you have not uh, subscribed to the channel and you are enjoying the series, please consider doing so. And if you put the little bell beside it, you can get a uh, basically a notification when a new uh, when a new episode is ready to go. Uh, and if you'd be so kind, please consider leaving a like uh, on the video as they do help them get noticed. I'll be back with one more video for uh, this week, so I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. Have a lovely evening. <laughs>